Christians have not understood or been forced to confront the need to endure as they have in previous points in history. Hello, my name is Chad Stewart and I'm here with Dr. Frank Hosel and we are sitting in the Spencerville Church and we are recording episode 11 in our study through the book of Hebrews, which coincides with the Seventh-day Adventist uh, Sabbath school quarterly for the first quarter of 2022. That covers January, February, and March. We're getting close to the end of it. And today, Frank, we are looking at what is definitely one of the most known chapters in Christianity in in the book of Hebrews. Uh, well, definitely the most probably known chapter in Christianity in the book of Hebrews, and maybe even one of the most known chapters in all the Bible. And it is Hebrews chapter 11. And, and Frank, I don't know, in, in Germany, do they do this? Uh, uh, we refer to this chapter as the Hall of Faith. Yes, the heroes of faith. The heroes Apology. of faith. So yeah, because because you know, uh, as Americans, we all like to focus on our Hall of Fame football and baseball and basketball. You know, so this is the Hall of Faith uh, chapter. And even though this chapter is about definitely faith, uh, the title of it is Jesus, author and perfecter of our faith, uh, we are going to start with by talking about the characteristic that faith produces, mm. and that is endurance. All right. Endurance. Uh, right there on Sunday, it says, endurance is a characteristic of God's end time people. This is produced by faith. Uh, in order to endure, believers need to, and the, the Hebrews uses this phrase, hold fast to their faith, right? So hold fast to their faith. And I want us to talk about endurance, Frank, because we are living in a world in which, let me not say that. Let me rephrase that. All right. You and I currently are living in a country mm. and probably in parts of Europe are like this as well in which Christians have not understood or been forced to confront the need to endure as they have in previous points in history. What do you think about that statement? Agreed, yes or no? Agreed, fully agreed. Fully agreed. Uh, and let me set this up maybe. Um, well, actually, Frank, off camera, you were talking and you were saying that that we should not seek out persecution, but kind of go on that route and where you're going with that. And then I'll, then I'll talk about kind of some of the error we've been living in. You see, uh, chapter 11 is a beautiful chapter. Yes. And it's, uh, there, there's a reason why it's called the Hall of Fame and yeah. of, of faith. Uh, because you, you do have these hero figures in the Bible, you know, yeah. that are really uh, examples for us to follow and uh, to follow their footsteps. And several of them are listed by name, yep. mentioned by name, Abraham and Moses and, and uh, Rahab. Rahab even. Uh, we could talk about that yeah, a little we'll later, you know. Later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but people who have done amazing things and have shown great trust in God mm -hmm. in critical circumstances, uh, so, so, so this this chapter really inspires us to be like those people, mm -hmm. uh, trusting God in difficulties, etc. But the, the challenge that we face today, uh, as you indicated, here in North America and some other countries of the first world, so to speak, the Western world, we um, we are doing so good, you know, financially, economically. Uh, there is no hardship. There is yeah, no yeah. persecution. Um, there is no need for endurance, yeah. uh, and there is no need to to deal with uh, hardship, uh, etc. Yes, you know, we experience all that in our personal lives in one way or another, but we we don't like that. You know, we don't like to hear about um, uh, difficulties. We don't like to hear about suffering. We don't like to hear these things. We'd like to po we'd like to to focus on the positive things of yeah, faith. Yeah, yeah. And yet, we cannot ignore that reality. Even here in North America, you know, people get unemployed. 
uh, people lose uh, their income, they lose their health, uh, loved ones die, uh, your marriage goes down the drain. Whatever it is, you know, you, you, you have to deal with losses. Yeah. You have to deal with circumstances that are not pleasant. Yeah. And, and how do you do that as a Christian? Yeah. Through, through his faith. I mean, you think about this, like it gives all this list of faith and then it says, and all these people, then verse 35, some were tortured, others suffered mocking and flogging, chains, imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflict, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. Now and they- all these were commended for their faith. And they are also heroes of faith. You know, it's it's not just Abraham and Moses yeah, yeah. and and uh, and the others uh, who who did marvelous things. Those people were just as much precious in God's eye as as all the other big names. Yeah. So that to me is an encouragement. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes you have to struggle as a parent. Sometimes <laughs> you have to struggle uh, in 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 your the place where you work or in in the school or in the university where you study uh, and 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 you have the impression nobody sees you oh. <laughs> who cares you know mm-hmm. and and yet you are confronted to make decisions uh, that impact the lives of others in one way or another uh, through the way you speak through the way you act through the way you interact with them mm-hmm. and uh and that's, I think, where we need to have that perseverance, yeah. where we need to have an endurance, where we don't easily quit, yeah. but stick to the things that God has given us. Let me, let me rebuke us somewhat in this endurance thing, because, you know, these people are commended that through all of this, they kept their faith. All of this, they, they, they kept their eyes on what was most important, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um. Uh, again, we were talking off camera with Jason, who's helping produce and record all these things, but, and he was sharing it with us, something that he had heard, how someone made the point that that the question keeps coming up post COVID, when are we going to go back to normal? Because, and, and when we think of it in the context of church, we're seeing churches be a little more empty. Churches are reporting a, a greater difficulty in recruiting volunteers. Mm, mm, mm. We, we see in society, uh, in our country, uh, even uh, a jaded spirit towards things, towards one another, tension and anger and all these things, right? And people wonder, when are we gonna go back? They keep asking, when are we gonna go back to normal? And the thing Jason was saying that he heard is some guy made the point that what we've been living through in the first world countries, so to speak, since basically World War II, Mm -hmm. is actually what's been abnormal. And what we are now in is the normal, that, that Christianity throughout history has been a struggle, yes. that, that, that it is always, at, at, in America, it's become, it became a season of popularity to be a Christian, you know? If you were a Christian, then you were on the right side of certain politics and, and the courts were in your favor and there's all these things. And, and we get tax breaks even as Christian churches in, in the United States and, and all these wonderful things. And we can say whatever we want because we're under protection of religious liberty and all these things. And really that's the abnormal when you look at the scope of human history, right? That's right, that's right. It's it's not 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 just abnormal when you look at the scope of history, world history. Uh, it's even if you look at the global perspective of this world at this moment. Great point. Great point. You know, we in North America have that privilege. Many countries in Central Europe, we have that privilege. But in Europe, you just move 500 miles to the east. You know, and the situation is completely different. You just move uh, a thousand miles south and you're in Africa. And there are countries where you have persecution. Go to Sudan, yeah. go to some other places where Christians, Christians are persecuted today. There are more Christians today who are persecuted than during the dark ages. Wow. Think about this. Just because- Say that again, there's what? There, there are more Christians who are persecuted and imprisoned and and, even killed today around the world in different countries that you don't even hear about. So it's not only that we're living in an abnormal age in America, we're actually living in an abnormal place based on the scope of the globe. 
I wouldn't say abnormal. It's a wonderful place. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's. A, I, I, it's I'm a, not trying to denigrate. I'm glad to live here, but but we haven't learned endurance. Yes, we've taken for granted what it means to be a Christian. Yes, and I'm uh, perhaps we will be ill prepared mm. when things get a little more difficult mm. for us, even here in this country. Wow. Who knows? You know, just let the economy go down the drain. Let uh, let some other circumstances come up where. People. Take away our tax breaks that we get when we give to the church, and <laughs> yeah, and and all of a sudden, you know, um, you're confronted to deal with uh, adverse circumstances and situations, and that's where the true character shows. Yeah, the real endurance. Yes, and and the real faith then. And the real faith. now now. We only can have endurance and that by having faith. Now let's let me let me say this: faith to many Christians that, that, that we maybe move amongst is just simply this. I believe that there is a Jesus. I have faith that there is a God. I have faith that he loves me. That's the extent of the faith. And I'm not saying that's not yeah, yeah, wonderful, yeah, yeah. But, but, but theirs was a, theirs was a deeper faith in, in what Hebrews refer to as the things which are not seen. And why don't you unpack that, Frank? Yeah, in, in, in the Bible, faith is not just um, a belief, a, a belief, an affirmation of what you know intellectually. Yeah, yeah. But it is, it has to do with uh, what we would call faithfulness, yeah. trust. So that's all part of the biblical concept of faith. So you trust a person because you, uh, you know that person. Yeah. You are faithful to that person because you are in a relationship with that person. Yeah. And, and so faith has this element of faithfulness. And uh, if, if you talk about faith and faithfulness and endurance, patience, you can only be patient. You can only endure if you have a goal that you want to reach that is worthwhile reaching. Uh, you know, if, if, if you don't have that perspective, yeah. that there is something that is worthwhile or a person that is worthwhile to be uh, faithful to. Mm -hmm. Why should I endure a uh, time of difficulty? Why should I be patient in that situation? So uh, for us, I think the Bible gives that perspective that is outside of ourselves. There is something that we want to attain, that we want to reach, that we want to get to. And, uh, and that is worth it because we want to be with Jesus. Yeah in the new heavens and the new earth. And this text in Hebrews eleven thirteen, 13, these all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar off and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus, make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. You think about our modern setting again here in North America and how panicked some Christians are. On one side, they're panicked that, oh no, someone might become president again and oh no, that's gonna ruin everything. And on the other side, they're panicked of, oh no, what if the courts don't go in our way? And, and this is saying, these folk made it clear that they were not seeking this perfect homeland here. They were... They were, they had, like you said, they had a goal that was outside of this earth. Yes, and this text actually is a, is a beautiful text that reminds us of something very important that maybe some of us lose uh, sight of. And that is this, this earth, this nation, this country that I'm part of, as beautiful and as wonderful, wonderful as, as it is, is not my final destination, is not my final no. We are just strangers here moving to the heavenly home where we all belong. So that is really an antidote, an antidote to, to all nationalism. Yeah. You know, I can be a proud citizen of whatever country I, I'm a part of, but I have to be mindful that as a Christian, my first loyalty is not to a nation or to a political institution or whatever it is. To a flag, to anything. But, but to Jesus Christ yeah. and to his kingdom, uh, we are moving. Yeah, and, yeah. and we are his representatives on this earth, wherever we live. Yeah. Well, I, I read a thing that said, 
Christians must move beyond nationalism and even beyond globalism to the eternal. Yes, absolutely. You know, we shouldn't be nationalists for sure. It's more healthy for a Christian to be a globalist than seeing the whole globe. Like you were just pointing out that more Christians are martyred now than in the dark ages, which is something we don't often think about. Mm. Uh, and so when we think we have it bad here, we should really think about what's, what's going on in the rest of the world. But, but even beyond that, we recognize that that's all just temporary because ultimately yes. our home is not. And by the way, you know, if that is, that, that is really a reality, as I said, you know, it, it can open our minds to seek ways to not just look at our little um, bubble yeah, yeah, yeah. where we live, yeah. but, but to, to find ways to help those people who are in need, yeah. who are persecuted, who don't have anybody to speak in, in their behalf. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was looking at the news the other day and, you know, so many things about our country. And I decided I'm just going to look at the world news. And, it, and I read, you know, about the 100,000 soldiers that are on the border of Ukraine. You know, I read about um, the Tongan people. Mm. One, of their two, one of their islands had every home on the island, the island of Mango during this volcano, had every island destroyed. You know, another island had all but two homes or all, all, every home on their island destroyed, and one island had all but two homes. And you think about it, we're arguing about various things here, and there's this all this pain there, mm. and all this suffering going on there, and just like, uh, just as it, it, it's, it's enough to, to break your heart. But this is about faith, but it's faith in the things unseen. And, w- and they talk about Abraham and his faith, uh, a cool point that he made that I hadn't thought about ever is that he talks about what's so amazing about Abraham coming to the conclusion that Isaac would be resurrected, Hebrews eleven seventeen, which says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up to Isaac and he would receive the promises was in the act of offering up his only son of whom it was said through Isaac. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, uh, from which figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. But I like this, that it said, this is amazing because no one had been yet resurrected. It's true. So Abraham had a, had a faith. In something that he had, nobody had seen yet. And not even a story heard about it. Yeah. That's kind of amazing. I mean, even our faith, yeah. Frank, is built on stories. Like the story of the resurrection, my faith in the resurrection is built upon the stories in the scriptures that I believe to be true. He didn't have a story of a resurrection and he still believed in it. He just had the word of God. He just had the word of God. He trusted that God could do something. Yes, it tells you something. And maybe that is why he became an example for us to to, to trust God just as much when he says something. I mean, that that was pretty cool, wasn't it? I I think that's awesome. And then of course, Moses. Uh, and, and Moses, and, and let's explain, and I am going to go here, Frank. <laughs> In Exodus chapter 2 and verse 14, it tells us that when Moses discovered, uh, when Moses realized that people knew he had killed the Egyptian, he was afraid. In fact, will you read that? Just Exodus two fourteen, so people can know what I'm talking about. Sure. Exodus two fourteen. He answered, who made you a prince and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed that other Egyptian? And then Moses was afraid and thought, surely the thing is known. And And then uh, he flees Egypt. And then he flees to Egypt, yeah. Now, we jump from there to to Hebrews (laughs) chapter 11 and verse 27. Mm. And it says, by faith, Moses left Egypt not being afraid of the anger of the king, mm. for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Okay, so Exodus 2.14 says he is afraid, and then he flees. Exodus, uh, Hebrews 11.27 says he flees not afraid. And Frank, let, let me say this to our viewers, that we don't know that we have a perfect explanation for this, but I thought, Frank, your explanation was the best. And I dropped this on Frank literally seconds before we started this. And he said, maybe we don't want to do this because I don't have a great answer. And I said, I might do it anyway. So, so here you go, Frank. But because yeah, I thought your answer was good. I liked it. I thought it was good. You know, there are, even, even though you study uh, theology and the Bible, there are, there are some questions that you've never come across before. To me, that was not 
a problem. It just didn't occur to me that there is a, a discrepancy maybe between those two passages. And I'm, I'm still not sure, Chad, whether that is really um, dealing with the same details in yeah. both stories. So yes, he killed the Egyptian. He was afraid what that would mean. And he decided he better flees because if even the other Egyptians uh, tell him that, you know, who yeah. knows what the, the Pharaoh will tell him. But uh, perhaps he flees Egypt also, not being, af <laughs> not being afraid of the anger of the Pharaoh. Just imagine he was the successor yeah. in line to become the next Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was not pleased, I think, to hear that his successor all of a sudden disappears. And, turns, and, on and then turns, turns on him, you yeah. know. And, and so uh, I, I think there was a certain anger in the Pharaoh's uh, heart over that, perhaps. And maybe this is what uh, Hebrews uh, points us to in that chapter, because really what Moses did, he said, I'm not going with the power that I see in, in Egypt. Yeah. I'd much rather trust the God who created heaven and earth. L just while I'm sitting here thinking of something, you know, uh, we as pastors sometimes, this is a great example, we as pastors sometimes teach when we're teaching Exodus that, that, that Moses did flee because he was afraid, quote unquote, of Pharaoh. Um, uh, we should probably read the whole Bible then because this would clearly say he was not afraid of Pharaoh and this is scripture. We should test scripture by scripture. Goes that we should do better exegesis sometimes. But, but, but just while you were saying that, could it be, Frank, and this is just you know sure. one idea, that he was afraid that he had gone outside of the will of God. Because Ellen White talks about how him taking things under his own power to try to, Try to, try to force God's hand, you know, trying to enact God's will through this action, right? Uh, could it have been that he was afraid in that regard that, oh man, I have gone outside the will of God, but not that he was actually afraid of losing the power that he had from Pharaoh? Could it could be. be you get what I'm saying? Does yeah, this make sense? Yeah, you know, we, we, we often do things as human beings that, uh, that we do out of... Um, our impulses, yeah. as he did. You know, he was angry about the injustice that he saw. So uh, he, he killed that man, tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we do things with the best intentions and they turn out not to be uh, helpful. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then we realize, oh, maybe I've done something that God really is not happy about, even though I perhaps thought that's the best possible option yeah, yeah, I yeah. have. And, uh, and that makes us a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> scared about the thing. This this actually probably gives us a good chance though to say this, Frank, and I don't tell me if you agree with me on this. I think you will. Don't worry. Oh, well, let's hear. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a good lesson. What I found in my study of the Bible is when I don't quite understand something, what I try to do is put it on a shelf here and say, God, I don't quite get this, or this may seem like a contradiction to me. I'll let you work it out. And almost always at some point in time, God brings it back to my memory in the right time mm. and, and has given me clarity on it. In other words, where people say, oh, there's contradictions in the Bible or, oh, there's this or there's that or the Bible's an error in this or that. It's not, I've never actually found the Bible to be the issue. I've always found my brain in the moment to be the issue. And if I just am willing to humbly put it on the shelf and acknowledge that my brain's the problem, not the Bible, then God works it out. Yeah, I would. Uh, you agree I, with that? I would agree with that. I think there is wisdom in if we don't have all the answers on particular questions, just to let it rest for a yeah. while, you know, because really, even in the life of Moses, we just know a little tiny bit. We don't have all the background information uh, yeah. on every detail that might be helpful to resolve some yeah, of the Yeah, we questions. have him born. We have him in a basket. We have him going to his mother or the, the daughter of Pharaoh when he was weaned. And then we have him killing a man at the age of 40. And then we have him in a desert at the age of 80, you know, talking to a burning bush. Yes, I mean, yes, yes, yes. there's a lot of, lot of context in there. The other thing though, I just think is I don't, what I'm saying is I don't think these two are in contradiction of each other. Mm. 
I just think that they look that way because they use the same English word and we, it probably yes, needs yes, some deeper yes. studies, some more look. And also it could be, you know, yeah. I'd encourage people yeah. to read uh, yeah. Patriarchs and Prophets because it might give some, some further yeah. insight into. Could I just come back to the yeah. endurance part uh, that you, you mentioned? Because yes. just immediately after chapter 11, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have chapter 12. Yeah. And there the idea of endurance uh, resurfaces again in okay. verse one. And I just would like to read verse one and two because I yep. think that helps us to get that perspective that can help us e even with these questions today. Yep. Uh, it reads, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance. Yep. The race that is set before us. Now, then he tells us what this race in endurance is. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. And that, I think, is the key for, for, our, uh, for our life mm -hmm. as Christians. Um, you know, we have this witness of people who yeah, have, yeah. Uh, have given us a good example. Mm -hmm. But the real thing is that we look not to people, but to Jesus, mm -hmm. because he is the founder and the perfecter. He, he is the beginning and the end. He completes our faith. And if you look to him, you are secure. You know, when, when I was a child, I'd like to, uh, to play a little uh, game. And maybe you've done that uh, as well. We would take a broom, you know, with a long yeah, stick, yeah, yeah. you know, and and we try to balance that yep. on our fingertip. Yep. Now, if you do that, I could show that in real life, you know, you can do that only if you look up. Yeah, the if moment you, you look down. If you look to your finger, yep. you can balance as hard as you will, and it will always fall. Yep. It will never, you will never succeed to get it straight. But the moment you look up, oh. it's easy for you to, to keep the balance. And I think that's, That's an illustration for me. If we look up to Jesus, we will stay in balance. But the moment you look to yourself, the moment to look... Look to not your upon sins, your own understanding, right? You know, and, 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 and to your own sinfulness, you yeah, know. Yeah. You can try and juggle as, as hard as you want. It, it will never succeed, you know. And I, I used that illustration once in a, in a, in a church where I, I gave a presentation. And, And later, later on, uh, somebody came to me and he says, and there's something else, he says, you know, it's not just if you look to yourself, but if you start to looking to others and compare yourself with others. Oh, that's good. That's <laughs> so, good. so I thought that's a nice uh, illustration. In a way, and even the way that ends, like, I like what you said there, because in a way, so these are witnesses to us of faith, but we're not even supposed to look to them because it says, you know, Let us run with endurance the race as set before us. And then who it tells us to actually look at is look to Jesus. Yes. Looking to Jesus, like you were saying. So we have this question about Moses. Was it exactly this? Was it? Well, you know, the point is, is not that he was a perfect illustration, but that he is an example of someone who endured in spite of the cha challenges. Mm, mm, mm. Not that Abraham was a perfect illustration, but he's someone that endured despite the challenges. Rahab, you know, as one of the, is one of the people in here and she's a prostitute, obviously not the perfect example, but, but she had faith in that. Can we just say about Rahab though real quick? Rahab is amazing. Rahab is amazing. And you you, it's a little surprising to find her here. You know, you, you have this, this progression, you have Abraham, Moses, and then, uh, Jacob and, and, and so forth. And then the promised land. And you would say, Joshua is the next one. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And instead of Joshua, yeah, it says Rahab, a woman, a prostitute for that one, and she lied, you know, when she covered the the spies. Yeah. So is she praised for doing something that is immoral, that misses the point, and that is not the point that why she is listed here. She is not recommended for her lying. But if you go back, oh, uh, so good. I I love that you said that because I've never really heard that explained well. You know, uh, because if situational you, ethics, we took that class, Dr. Dr. Yeah. Miroslav Kish. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And that's a, a classic example that's often quoted, you know, and then people say, see, she is a, a hero of faith 
and she even deceived the other uh, people and oh, didn't tell the truth. I see where you're going. This is good. And so, uh, so they are, therefore, she, this is not why she is recommended. If you go back uh, to the story in yeah. the Old Testament where, where it tells about when the spies come, she talks to the spies and she says, we all have heard about the mighty deeds of God and how he delivered the people out of Egypt and how you conquered this king and that king and our hearts trembled. But none of them, none of them believed in the God who did this, but she did. Yeah. So she was the only one who had faith and she exercised that with all the deficiencies that she had as a prostitute. Still living and as a, a prostitute and everything else. But deep in her heart, she had that core. She listened to the sal something. salvation story of God with his people. And she said, there must be something to that. I want to live with that God. And therefore she did the things. And for that, she is recommended. <sighs> so beautiful. And not only there, she's <laughs> in Jesus's, well, yeah, his she, genus, she, his, his genealogy, like, you know, there's a lot of weird people mentioned there, but specifically yeah. Rahab is one of only a few women in yeah, that yeah. in that specific thing. I love that you point that out, that she is not recommended to us because of the way she lived or because of the way she lied, because you're right. Sometimes people will say, oh, look, even like, you know, this is, it's it's okay at times, you know. Mm. No. No, no. She's recommended because she heard and she believed. And he points out, she was a good exemplar for the audience of Hebrews who did not hear Jesus preach or see him do a miracle. Yes. And for us as well, who did not see these things either. Yes. But they simply heard and through the hearing, there's something stirred in their being and they knew. Absolutely. This is <clears throat> right. She truly, you know, she didn't understand the concept of Jesus, but she truly saw the witnesses, those spies in her room, and then look to Jesus. Yes, and just by the word, just by the testimony by the of testimony. what she had heard from others, she, um, she believed. I love that because that's for us. And just by the testimony of these people, yes. we look to Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. And we run the race with endurance. Uh, that's beautiful. Frank, I don't, is there more you got to go? Because I, that was so uh, is there something else you want to hit on there? Just maybe a little footnote okay. to what we are yes, just talking yes. about. First okay. Peter chapter 1. Well, let me go there. Verse 8. Uh, because that really um, brings it down to us. Okay, and, yeah. First uh, Peter because chapter I've, one. I've always wondered, you know, I would have loved to hear Jesus speak in person, be with him in person. Yeah. You know? And here Peter says, speaking to the Gentiles uh, to whom he writes this letter. And she, he says, Though you have not seen him, Jesus, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Why do we do that? Why can we do that? We haven't seen Jesus, but we have heard about him. Yeah. And the source of our knowledge is the Bible. Yeah. And if we read the Bible and if we encounter Jesus in the Bible, then we can have the same joy and we can have the same love as these uh, people had who didn't see him either. It just shows that we're at, without excuse. Yeah. We're not enduring if we don't endure. Yeah. So this is beautiful. That is so good. We're going to stop right there. Some of these go by so fast, Frank. That's right. Some of these <laughs> go by so fast. I feel like this, we could just keep talking on this. It might be why this is one of the most popular ones. Hey, if you like this, then I would encourage you to make sure that you hit the thumbs up button on the YouTube channel there that you're watching this on. Uh, share it with a friend. The more you share, the more you hit uh, the thumbs up, then the more uh, it spreads far and wide. That's the way the algorithm works on YouTube. Also, I want to encourage you that if you have any questions, if you have comments on what we've said, uh, Go ahead and leave that comment in the comment box there on YouTube. Uh, if there's a question you have, we're not going to get into a debate with you, but as much as we can answer that question, we will try to. Uh, if we can't answer it, we'll say, well, we don't really have a good answer for that. If you have a better answer for what we were talking about, like with Moses, <laughs> then maybe explain that to us. That'd be great. But uh, we are so glad to have you join us from week to week. We only have two more episodes left, 12 and 13, before Genesis is after this. But uh, 12 and 13 coming up. And so please uh, join us next Friday when we release this or 
I guess any day you find yes. it because they may not find it on Friday. But whenever you find it, we release these on each Friday. And uh, so be well and God bless you and enjoy your time studying the Bible, not only by yourself, but study it with others because that's the way the Bible is meant to be studied most of all. All right, God bless you. Bye-bye. See you again.